before the amputations, I used to be a, I'd say, I, said, I call myself a hardcore runner because I ran every day and every day I usually averaged seven or six miles. And I was actually practicing for my second half marathon and I was driving on my way to go running to practice when I had my accident. And then my parents showed me pictures of the accident and when I was in the hospital and I couldn't believe it. I was like, this isn't my car. This isn't my car. I just couldn't believe it. And I was taken to the nearby Naval Hospital, which was good because the local hospital, it's known as the one-way hospital. And it just so happened that they had a specialist visiting from Okinawa. And she was there for two weeks only. And she was the one that did my amputations. I think that's definitely God's hand at work. My lungs had collapsed, my liver was lacerated, my kidneys failed, my gallbladder failed, I was on a respirator, I had blood in the brain. You now they the doctors told my parents that I would be have the mind of a five-year-old, most likely, and that they would have to work from there and rehab and everything. But when I came back, the first thing my mom said I said was, Hi mom. They were praying every day at the hospital and the church came to support them every day and they prayed for me every day. And so from hearing that story and witnessing it firsthand, you know, I thought that God really does care. He listened to prayers because everything, every little thing that happened, you know, he fixed, he, he made me better again, you know. There were of course some things that I had to work on to get better, like my strength and my vision, I had double vision for maybe three months and my, you know, I was very weak. I was down to 70 some pounds and so, you know, just through that, through the stories I heard of me being in the hospital and from witnessing it firsthand, you know, I just believe that God really did answer prayers and He does care about every little thing that happens. I had to be medevac to the Philippines for more care because that was the best that the hospital in Guam could do for me. And in the Philippines, I went through rehab and I was just like, okay, so I don't have any legs. Now what do I do? But I wasn't angry at God. My parents were afraid that I would be, you know, angry and bitter, but I wasn't, you know, and especially after hearing the story in the hospital, I was just like, okay, God, what do you want me to do now? I'm just going to have to trust in you from now on. God allowed it to happen, but I knew that he would take care of me. Well, I was in a wheelchair for three months before I got my first set of prosthetics. There is no prosthetic clinic on Guam, and there's a visiting prosthetist that comes every two and a half months. And so that's who I met. And they provided me with my first set of prosthetics and I was a bit depressed because they were just so uncomfortable. And the company told me that, well, you just have to get used to it. A company shouldn't tell you that. That they should work their hardest to make sure it fits and you know work with you to make sure you learn how to use them properly. It's a world of difference to make to have prosthetics that fit perfectly and feel comfortable. Um, the other ones I had, I was continually adjusting them and adding uh, socks to make it comfortable. And these ones just fit like a glove, you know. It took a couple tries, but that's, you know, the company, that's what Progressive was willing to do and listen to my concerns. And th they arrived at a product that I'm happy with. Well, my physical goals right now are just to learn how to walk and to walk well without falling um, and to learn how to sit and stand and go upstairs and downstairs and up curbs because that's a bit of a challenge. I've taken up swimming and it's a little, it was a bit of a challenge without legs, you know, because your natural instinct is to kick your legs. And so I had to learn how to swim without that. And the fins that Progressive has made for me, you know, I'll get to do that again, so. Well, after my accident, my mindset has changed a lot. Uh, you know, I had a lot 
now I think more about what God's plan is instead of what my plan is. Before the accident, I thought, you know, that it was just what I wanted to do, and this is how I was going to do it, but now I know that it's God. And after my accident, I had a, a there was a verse that stuck in my mind, Proverbs 16, 9, about how in his heart, a, a man plans his steps, but God determines his course. And that's really stuck out to me, because before the accident, I thought that I had my whole life planned out. I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to do, this is how I'm going to do it. And God had a different plan in mind for me, a different course in mind for me. And so I believe, I believe He's, you know, I'll still be able to do some parts of it, but He has a different way that I'm going to do it. And now I'm, I have God's plan in mind of how I'm going to do it and why I'm going to do it instead of my, my thinking of why I want to do it. In life, I, my goals for life, I still plan on opening the, the coffee roaster but I think I have a different goal now, you know, a, mind, a mindset about doing it, like God's going to use it to help, you know, to bless others. I'm thinking, I'm seriously considering going to law school to help others, you know, because especially because the cost of, of uh, hiring an attorney is so expensive, I can do it for free, especially on Guam that's needed. Well, the attitude that I plan on having, or the, that really I, I have it, is that determination. You just don't want to give up. And my mom will say I'm stubborn, but I think that helps a lot. It's my determination to keep on living. And my, you know, my choices are to walk and fall sometimes, or to be stuck in a wheelchair. I know I'm going to fall, and I've fallen a lot. But, you know, you just got to keep on going and, you know, I just, I don't want to give up. I'm not, I don't give up.